I spent 100 days with my friend Hobby surviving a super flat world with no structures by building a mob farm, using iron from zombies to get a cauldron, using the cauldron to collect rain, using the water to get drowned, drowned for a lightning rod, lightning strikes pigs, piglins drop gold, you're a zombie villager, and we ended up getting a sapling with only a few days to spare before the 100 days was up. You guys wanted a sequel, so here we are on day 101. Hobby and I were a bit tired of working on decorating our base interior, so I got right to work decorating the pig pen area so it'll transition better into our base. Hobby collected some iron from iron golems, sorted out his inventory, and then put his big brain to work making plans. On day two, Hobby outlined a general octagon shape for our base expansion. After all, we're gonna need a bigger base if we're gonna live here for another 100 days. I decided we should go green and put some dirt down for the pigs, which will eventually turn into lush green grass. We also decided to cover up our old fish farm and build a new one somewhere better at some point. We really need to light everything up so we don't have to sleep as much because right now, whenever the mobs get bad at night, we have to run to sleep, which means we can't get as much done. On day three, we woke up to a rabbit hide that our cats left us overnight. Hobby continued his octagon outline and farmed up some wood and iron while I continued placing dirt to make our base green and grassy. Day four and five were more of the same. Digging dirt, placing dirt, getting cat gifts, and collecting resources. By day six, I was basically done with placing all the dirt for the new and improved pig pen, and Hobby spent the day trading with villagers and getting materials ready for a new and improved iron farm. Once we get a steady, automatic source of iron, we can easily use minecarts and rails to transport villagers into a villager trading hall. Plus, iron itself is a pretty good trade for emeralds. Hobby was chopping wood in the morning of day 7 when we realized that the difficulty of our server had accidentally been reset to easy. I just realized our local difficulty reset, but whatever. We switched it right back to hard, but this meant that our local difficulty would probably now be too low to get any mobs spawning with diamond armor. This is a huge bummer, because without a way to get stone and structural is super flat, there's no way to get an armor or villager, meaning that all diamond armor needs to be dropped by mobs. After this sad news, Hobby went off to start a big wheat farm and I coped by sadly farming packed mud. I lost myself in my sorrows and lost track of time and spent the whole next day farming packed mud until I realized I should probably help Hobby by bringing him some materials for his new farm. We worked together on day 9 as well and by day 10 Hobby was done with the wheat farm and I had acquired a bunch of mud. Our first 10 days are over but we basically have everything we need to start working on the new iron golem farm. Once that's done, we can finally start our main project for the 100 days which is a huge villager trading hall. After sleeping in late on day 11, I headed off to tend to the wheat in our new farm, and Hobby spent the day trading for emeralds, and then started getting loads of campfires by breaking and then recrafting them. The two of us even shared a special moment at sunset. Hi. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> on day 12, Hobby continued to trade and got a silk touch iron shovel, meaning we no longer have to kill endermen holding grass in order to get grass blocks. He also unlocked the diamond axe trade. The next day, I forced Hobby to begin working on the iron golem farm while I gathered wood so I could make a chest for each color of the sheep pen. I finished up placing the chests on day 14, and I said hi to Hobby's forgotten donkey who will probably be abandoned in this random sheep pen forever. Hobby kept working on the iron golem farm, and I went to give the wheat another harvest. By day 15, I had finally managed to fill in the entire wheat farm with seeds, making it much easier to breed animals and obtain packed mud. Which is good, because Hobby is currently burning through it very quickly while working on the iron farm. Oh, and by the way, the design is by Avamance. I'll link it in the description. I also started planting 2x2 two two spruce trees to fill in the octagon shape Hobby laid out for the outer wall of our base. On day 16, Hobby and I had a wholesome moment chopping down a tree. Wow, teamwork makes the dream work. Once again, we've proved that the real 100 days are the friends we made along the way. Hobby finished up the iron golem farm, so now we just have to move some villagers in to get it running. Hobby spent day 17 finally lighting up our base so that we can stay up catching zombies. He has a fancy mod that overlays light levels on the ground so you can see where mobs are going to spawn. Meanwhile, I got some iron to use for minecarts and rails. We caught a few zombies and named them Porkchop 1 and Porkchop 2. And we forgot to light up the top of the mob farm, so Hobby had to battle this griefer. The morning of day 18, Hobby went to light up the top of the mob farm. Careful, Hobby. Afterwards, he worked on moving villagers into the iron golem farm. And you try your best, but you don't succeed. While Hobby was trying his best, I was expanding the outer circle of the base. I also got to see this griefer get absolutely destroyed by our security system. On day 19, I continued expanding the outer circle of the base, and Hobby spent the day moving villagers. We did some zombie moving that night, and it looked like the farm was working. After spending the morning of day 20 getting a rogue villager back into his forever cell, I spent the rest of the day tearing down our old iron golem farm and starting construction on a new bridge through the pig pit. Also, I got a new record, but we'll never be able to listen to it. 20 days are now behind us, and with a better iron golem farm complete, we can at last get a villager trading hall started. It's amazing what we've accomplished in the last 20 days compared to our first 20 days in this world. On day 21, I continued working on the bridge and tearing down the iron farm. Hobby worked on expanding our water perimeter a bit and tending the wheat fields. On day 22, Hobby combined shovels to get a shovel that instant mines dirt. He used it to help me finish off the dirt layer of the pig pit. I just about finished up pig pit pass, which is what I've decided to call the bridge. And just before the dawn of day 23, I moved the villagers from the 
old iron golem farm into a little space under the far end of the bridge. These little guys will come into play later. Hobby and I grinded for bone blocks a bit, which I needed to finish Pinkman Pass, and he needs for the villager trading hall. Hobby also started saving up emeralds for a bell, which we think might encourage wandering traders to spawn in our pig pit. On day 24, I finally finished decorating Pinkman Pass, and Hobby officially started the trading hall. Hobby purchased that shiny new bell we wanted on day 25, and I made a nice little gateway for it. I quickly made some mini pig pens in case of lightning, and Hobby was kind enough to quickly convert the mob farm to a drowned farm once again so I could get the copper needed for a second lightning rod. By the next day, I had my second lightning rod, and I went off to start working on a little cow farm out towards the wheat fields. At this point, Hobby noticed that only the right side of the iron golem farm seemed to be working, so he set out to correct it that night after delivering me some nice resources to help me finish off the cow pen. I brought the cows to their new home on day 27, and Hobby gifted me a beautiful new diamond shovel. Oh, thank you. We worked on breeding our sheep and collecting wool for future projects for a while, and then Hobby successfully got a new zombie into the iron golem farm. On day 28, I worked on trying to make our giant spruce wall even at the top and free of leaves, while Hobby finished up the repairs in the iron golem farm. And after spending almost all of day 29 on the spruce wall, I decided it looks absolutely terrible. The wall doesn't look good. <laughs> it doesn't, does it? No, it looks terrible. So on day 30, Hobby and I worked together to take down the wall. The Iron Golem Farm was now working on both sides and we now had a ton of wood. This session was a real grind and a bit frustrating with so much time spent building and tearing down the outer wall, as well as fixing the Iron Golem Farm. But we did get a cow farm done, a bridge built, and the skeleton of our future trading hall all set up. We kicked off the next 10 days by finishing up chopping down the tree wall. Hobby bought a new diamond ax and combined them to make an OP wood chopper. He then removed the ugly dirt path to the Iron Golem Farm now that it was officially fixed and brought me a new diamond ax of my own. Hobby is really giving Santa a run for his money. The next day, we took a break from the hustle and bustle to tell each other some nice campfire stories. After that, I did a bit of decorating with azalea trees and bushes, and Hobby kept working on the villager trading hall. Hobby began expanding the hall on day 33, as I helped him out by bringing materials to him. This continued on for the next several days. On day 34, I worked on copying the right side while Hobby started the second floor. On day 35, we just kept on grinding, and on day 36, I decided to construct a big circular entrance for our third floor. By day 37, we were getting pretty annoyed with constantly having to farm white wool and we were also almost out of the wood already. The good news is once I tear these walls down, we probably won't ever need to farm wood again. <laughs> I decided to start working on some Tory gates to go between the main and side buildings of the hall. On day 38, Hobby once again expanded our water perimeter a bit to cover the new base expansions, and I switched up the design for the Tory gate to use oak wood for a bit more contrast. On day 39, I spent the entire day copying the gate to the other side of the base, and I failed about five times in a row because I refused to take any screenshots for reference. Meanwhile, Hobby got an efficiency five shovel, and in honor of our last video, named it the Big Dig. He then spent the rest of the day collecting bone blocks, upgrading his armor, and listening to me mess up the gate over and over and over. What the f am I doing wrong? On day 40, I finally organized my inventory, which had been driving me crazy for the past 10 days. Hobby decided to bring a wandering trader llama back home to our base, which would surely become another one of his neglected pets. I did my best to go through our base and get rid of any torches I could, replacing them with nice pretty lanterns. And in the process, I managed to create this horrifying zombie horde, so we ran to bed. Another 10 days down, and our base looks truly transformed. It's amazing what focusing on aesthetics can do for the quality of life in your base. Speaking of aesthetics, I spent day 41 decorating the center of the base finally. Hobby worked on the third floor of the main building, which is where our villager breeder will go. We just need to be careful to spawn proof the area because it is inside of a slime chunk. On day 42, Hobby began construction on the breeder, which is designed by Logical Geek Boy. I decided to carve a circle in the roof of our storage room to let a little natural light in. Then Hobby and I both teamed up to transport the villagers under the bridge into the breeding chamber. Nighttime was making the villagers want to run towards the beds, so we decided to sleep to make things easier. But before we could continue with the villagers on day 43, we spotted a wandering trader. Ooh, wandering trader! Wandering trader! We purchased as much as we could of his entire Stock. We got oak saplings, which meant no new wood type, unfortunately, but we can get bees. Kelp will let us make a kelp farm and potentially use kelp blocks in our build. Cyan dye gives us access to a new wool color, and pufferfish can potentially be used to make a proximity detector for future redstone contraptions. We got the bubble coral and the nautilus shells just because why not? It seemed worth it to buy them. We confirmed that kelp does indeed cook on campfires and crafted our first kelp block. This might be really good to use as a roof for one of our buildings. After all the excitement from the trader visit calmed down, we got back to work. Abby got a villager into the breeder, and I made some items frames for our storage room to make it a bit nicer to use. The next day, Hobby got the second villager into the breeder and cleaned up a bit while I made a big yin-yang pattern with carpet in the slime chunk. The yin-yang represents Hobby and I, but I don't know who's yin and who's yang. Please help us figure it out. Which one's the cool one? Can I be the cool one? On day 45, we were officially out of our wood supply. Hobby finished the villager breeder and I began to upgrade the side buildings a bit and made the horrifying discovery that they don't match. I spent all day fixing this on day 46 while Hobby did some decorating with his fancy emerald blocks and confirmed that the villager breeder was indeed working. 
working. We got a baby villager. On day 47, I discovered that once again, the side buildings did not match. And this time, Hobby took pity on me and spent the day helping me correct the mistake. On day 48, Hobby began setting up the system for transporting villagers out of the breeder. I finished up with the side buildings for the time being and instead turned my attention to decorating the cow farm a bit. On day 49, Hobby got our first bee nest. I expanded the cow farm even more and Hobby took care of some escaped villagers. On day 50, I started working on some roofs for the side buildings and Hobby started laying rails for the villager transportation system. I needed a bit of spruce wood, so I traded with Hobby. Do you have any spruce on you? Hello, I am a villager. Where are you? Oh, <laughs> here, have, uh, have this spruce boat. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you. I think the villagers are rubbing off on him. Already, we're halfway through our second hundred days and our base has completely changed. I never thought I'd say this, but it's starting to look like a base you'd see in a normal Minecraft world. Our second 50 days kicked off with a bang. Er, well, a flash and then a bang. Both of our pig pens were struck by lightning and we managed to get 11 gold ingots in total. Enough for a set of powered rails. Our pig supply is now dangerously low, so we definitely need to breed these guys. On day 52, Hobby gifted me an efficiency two diamond axe, which I used to collect some oak wood for decorating. Hobby and I then planned out some of the finer details of the the villager transportation system together, and I went off to continue work on the roofs for the side buildings. I used pressure plates to make sure that no mobs could spawn. I continued working on copying over the roof for the entirety of day 53, while Hobby worked on the rail system and even got the first villager into place. We really need fish to trade with the villagers, so Hobby began constructing a new fishing pond behind our sheep farms. By day 54, I was finally done with all of the roofs, and Hobby finished up his fishing pond. At this point, I decided to begin work on a seaweed bar. The plan is to be able to easily farm and cook tons of kelp so that we can use the kelp blocks for decorating. While I was working on that, Hobby spent some time fishing and even caught a nice new unbreaking three fishing rod. The next day, Hobby took a fishing break to come help me with the seaweed bar and we planted the first kelp. On day 56, Hobby went back to fishing and caught some nice enchanted books. I spent another full day building up the kelp farm. By day 57, I was almost done with the kelp farm and Hobby caught some more awesome treasures like this mending bow. The next day, I took a short break from the kelp farm to add some carpets to all of the villager trading halls, both for aesthetics and for mob proofing. Meanwhile, Hobby managed to get a luck of the C3 unbreaking three fishing rod by trading with villagers and combining rods. I crafted up some minecarts and went to go transport some villagers and I immediately got stuck and had to have Hobby rescue me. My hero. On day 59, Hobby decided to get a cat of his own. Wish I knew him. Uh, Grey Tobin. Once again, I found myself begging Hobby for something. This time it was leaves. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Hobby continued fishing and got a really good fishing rod while I transported loads of villagers into their cells. By day 60, Hobby had made an awesome bow and afterwards began trading with our new villagers. I continued transporting a bunch of villagers into their cells and then wrapped up the day with some good old fashioned wood farming. We've now accomplished a ton of our goals for these hundred days, but there's so much more we can work on. For example, our mob farm, which Hobby began renovating on day 61. The plan is to take down the old one and construct something that uses water flushing to be a little more efficient. We're also going to use hoppers so that we can automatically collect drops instead of killing the mobs by hand. While Hobby worked on that, I tidied up our circle entrance a little and spent the rest of the day expanding our seaweed bar. By day 62, I had planted half the kelp farm. At this point, I needed some more wood, but I realized we didn't have any more bone meal because the old mob farm was no longer in operation, so I was going to have to wait for trees to grow the old-fashioned way. Hobby made some good progress on the mob renovation project, and I went back to transporting villagers into their trading hall cells. On day 63, Hobby once again continued work on the mob farm. He used a clever boat clock design by Il Mango to get the redstone timing needed for our flushing system. I forgot that the giant spruce trees create a bunch of pods all, so after gathering wood, I had a big mess to clean up. If only I had Hobby's big dig, y you know, his awesome shovel. With my newly gathered wood, I went back to work on the kelp farm. Hobby realized we need to lower the height of the hoppers at the bottom of the drop chute in order for witches to die from fall damage. The next day, I finished up the kelp farm and Hobby worked all day long on the mob farm. On day 65, I tried harvesting the kelp for the first time and it was actually really fun to smelt it on the campfire wall. Meanwhile, Hobby finally descended from the heavens in order to gather some more wood for the farm. He used the wood to continue construction on day 66 while I farmed some more wood. I began to decorate the mob farm and in the process, I decided to deliver Hobby some more wood, like a nice friend. Don't cry, Miko. <laughs> no! Aww. And I died due to clumsiness. This was the only death during these 100 days, but it felt pretty bad. Once again, Hobby and I thanked our past selves for deciding not to do this in hardcore. Hobby finished up the mob farm on day 67, while I continued to decorate it to the best of my ability. On day 68, Hobby decided to add leaf blocks to the drop chute to prevent mobs from missing the hoppers and escaping. I went on top of the farm in order to disable mobs from spawning while he did so. The farm seemed to be working slower than it should, and after investigating, Hobby realized that I had left a hole in the roof. My bad. On day 69, 
69. I farmed up some more kelp at the seaweed bar, and Hobby once again extended our water perimeter to prevent mobs from spawning while he fished. On day 70, Hobby decided it was finally time to make a chicken farm so that we'd have another source of food. I went back to decorating the mob farm, which was dangerous business. With the new mob farm done, another huge goal had been completed. Now it feels like that 200 day mark is fast approaching. I got nervous being so high at night on day 70, so I went to sleep up there, and I had a terrible nightmare that I woke up inside of the mob farm. It freaked me out, so I returned to Earth. More villagers had bred, so I went back to putting them in their place. Hobby was having no luck with getting chickens in his farm, so he decided to lure one home with seeds. The chicken fell in our pink sheep pit, and Hobby decided to leave it there to collect some eggs. The next day, he went back to spawn to look for another chicken. I guess I'm not the only one having night terrors, because Hobby dozed off and dreamed that his boat sunk into the ground. While Hobby struggled to get his second chicken past the slime army of No Man's Land, I worked on a secret tunnel leading out of our storage room. I spent the morning of day 73 collecting bone blocks and white wool to continue decorating the mob farm. Hobby worked on finishing up the rail system for the villagers so that we can finally get the last few cells filled in. The morning of day 74, Hobby went to go breed his chickens. Afterwards, he found my secret entrance, so now I guess it's just an entrance. I continued working on decorating the mob farm all day long. On day 75, Hobby finally got a baby chicken in his coop, and I farmed wood for a while in the rain. Then the two of us worked together to finish the very last rail line of the villager transportation system. Hobby decided to tackle one of our last remaining project ideas on day 76, auto crop farms. We decided to use this design by Mysticat. While Hobby picked out a good spot and watched the tutorial, I continued decorating the mob farm. But by day 77, I had to face the facts. My decorations didn't look great. Hobby, I gotta say, it looks terrible. No, it doesn't. It does. No. It looks so bad. It was blocking visibility around the base and just overall looked a little basic. Plus, I kept almost dying no. while working on it. No! No! Also, how the heck did that cat get here? What the heck? I was feeling pretty burnt out, so I went to use the seaweed bar. While I dealt with this personal crisis, Hobby was actually being productive, making great progress on the auto crop farms. By day 78, he had finished half of the build. I continued to screw up by making a big mob oopsie at the kelp farm. I worked on killing off all the mobs and lighting everything up, and then continued transporting villagers into their cells. By the next day, I had finished, and all of the cells in our trading hall were now filled up. Hobby continued working on his auto crop farms all day. Finally, on day 80, it was time to do the inevitable. Hobby and I spent the entire day removing my mediocre decorations of the mob farm. Sometimes, part of being a good Minecraft player is about knowing when something isn't quite working and being willing to remove a build you spent time on. There's only 20 days remaining, but we still have a few final projects up our sleeves. On day 81, I worked on decorating the kelp and iron building, or as we've been calling it, the south wing. Hobby worked on some finishing touches to the auto crop farms in the north wing. By day 82, he was ready to move villagers in and get the farms running. He got one of the two farms completely finished up. Meanwhile, I ran around getting workstations so that all of our villagers would be employed. Hobby and I have 0% unemployment. Beat that, Mr. President. Come on. Afterwards, I started the last major project I wanted to complete before 200 days. I want to transform our boring fish farm into a scenic pond complete with a waterfall. Since we don't have access to stone, I'm using wool, so I need to collect lots of it. The next day, Hobby finished up the second auto crop farm, and I made some awesome progress on the fishing sanctuary. I'm having to get really creative with the blocks I use. With his auto crop project all done, Hobby decided to help me on day 84 by collecting phony stone for me and delivering it to me while I worked all day. Since we haven't lit up the area yet, we brought some beds over so we can sleep through the night, but this means we'll have to work extra fast to make up for the lost time. On day 85, Hobby acted out a precision strike on a rogue leaf block that refused to vacate our airspace. After his tactical maneuver, we both spent the rest of the day working on the sanctuary together. On day 86, I decided to really switch things up and worked on the waterfall all day. Get it? I, I was being sarcastic because I keep working on the, the fish pond area. Never mind. Hobby helped out by doing some terraforming in the water and continuing to shear the sheep. He also crafted up some bone blocks and planted more potatoes in the auto crop farms. Turns out they're working great. This is gonna be awesome for trading emeralds, breeding pigs, and most importantly, snacking. The grind on the sanctuary area continued on day 87, and Hobby helped me out by lighting up the area a bit and shearing the sheep as always. On day 88, Hobby tried some terraforming of his own by making some cliffs on the left side. I decided to try and make a custom cherry blossom tree. I really think this will tie the area together. I finished the trunk and the branches and then began began placing magenta and pink wool to act as the leaves. I spent the next day breeding and shearing pink sheep to get more wool for the tree. I also began sprinkling in bone blocks at the top to complete the gradient. It's kind of a chunky gradient due to the limited color palette, but I was pretty happy with how it was coming out. Hobby spent the day building a little fishing dock and adding some finishing touches like lily pads and azalea leaves. These little details go a really long way. On day 90, Hobby decided to do some fishing in our newly beautified pond. I thought of a few fun improvements to add, like pink carpet petals falling from the tree. I used string 
thing in order to get the carpet to float. I also thought campfire smoke in the waterfall might look kind of like mist. Hobby was kind enough to share his screen with me so I could get the placement just right. Hobby wrapped up the day by adding more dirt paths and replacing some of his torches with lanterns after I yelled at him for torch spamming. The fishing pond is coming out incredible, but with only 10 days left, it's time to focus on some last minute improvements to the base. On day 91, I finished up with the flower petals, touched up the dirt paths a bit, and added more to the rocky area of the waterfall. Hobby kindly continued to bring me resources and worked on shaping his own area of the build a bit. On day 92, I added a bit more to the rocks once again, and I did my best to bury all of the torches underneath moss carpet for hidden lighting. Hobby spent the whole day farming wood so that we can build a bridge through the sheep area to get to our sanctuary. On the morning of day 93, Hobby finally managed to get a second chicken in his little coop. Afterwards, he once again spent the day collecting wood, while I raised the waterfall up to be a bit more dramatic. On day 94, Hobby went to go trade with villagers and level them up a bit. I went ahead and began constructing the bridge through the sheep pens. It was a pain in the butt to work around the sheep, but I made good progress and nearly finished it before getting distracted by a thunderstorm. Lightning once again struck our pig pens, so as the sun came up on day 95, Hobby and I cleaned up the piglins and managed to get 15 gold ingots. With the leftover gold from the previous storm, we now have 26 ingots in total. Unfortunately, it seemed that all of our pigs had wandered into the pens prior to the storm, meaning that we now have a pig population of zero. At some point, we'll need to go back to spawn and get some new pigs, or else we may just have to rename Pig Pit Pass to Pat Piss. Huh? To Sorry, pit pass. Pit pass. Are those even real words? It's starting to sound meaningless. Anyways, I finished up the bridge to the sanctuary and then added a bit more to the waterfall while Hobby worked on organizing our mob drops into bulk storage bins. On day 96, I worked on the transition from the sanctuary bridge to our main base while Hobby traded for golden carrots and once again populated the auto crop farms with more potatoes so that all four modules would be running. I also spent some time consolidating one of our old chests into our storage room. The next day, I stopped by the seaweed bar for another harvest while Hobby spent the day working a bit with our bees. He didn't realized that breaking a beehive would still make the bees angry, just like it does with the nests, so he ended up getting stung and killing one of our poor bees. R.I.P. On day 98, Hobby and I spent the morning working on finally covering up the open ceiling in our main base that had been bothering us for quite some time. It's where our original fishing pond used to be, and we never knew quite what to do with the area. Then Hobby remembered to go turn off the villager breeder now that our trading hall was at full capacity. For the rest of the day, Hobby worked on small things like trading, getting rid of torches around the base, and cleaning up random chests and crafting benches. While he was doing that, I was working on the south wing. I added a mossy terrace and a facade for the second floor, complete with a beautiful kelp roof. I finished up with that project on day 99, and I was really happy with how it came out. Hobby continued removing torches from around our base and managed to get both our pigless pit and our sheep pens looking nice and neat with lanterns. And then the sun came up on our 200th day in the world, meaning our second journey was coming to a close. To celebrate, Hobby baked us a cake while I made a table and chairs on our brand new deck so that we had a place to sit and enjoy it. Yay, Hobby. Yay, now I need to jump so I can eat the cake. We ate a bit of cake and then remembered that we totally forgot to use the cyan dye we had gotten from the wandering trader. So we went and crafted a little candle for our table. Unfortunately, it wouldn't go into the cake since we already ate some. The 200th day wrapped up in the best way possible with me watching the sunset with my Habibi. During our first 100 days, we had grinded so much to get into the late game of Structuralist Superfly, and it was truly incredible to see just how much we could accomplish in 100 days when we didn't have to kill hundreds of zombies for iron or spend our time trying to get witches to throw weakness potions at zombie villagers. Our world looks so different now, and we're both so proud of how everything came out. It's pretty amazing to think you can create all of this from just dirt. There's still so much potential for this world, and Hobby and I have a whole list of ideas. So if you guys want to see another installment, leave a like and a comment down below. If enough of you want it, we'll definitely do another. Thanks for watching.